morning, Mr. Gordon. Hey, morning, Tom. In the morning. Hi. 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 Yeah, that sounded painful to me. Yeah, you just banged something hard. <laughs> it was my knee on the corner of the table. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Uh, we got what? All good. Nikki, and then joining, and then there's Leonard. Enjoyed that session yesterday, Gordon. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Good morning, Miss Nikki. Morning. Good to see good you. Is everyone well? Oh, well. Yeah, good. good. Yes, good. yes, thank yes. you. Yeah. Let's see, we're missing a Lennon, I guess. Is that breakfast, Gordon? That's a Levin's. <laughs> breakfast really? was breakfast was early this morning. <laughs> oh, good for you. Uh. What's new in New York? I I love your city. I I went there and I almost got killed there. I was I was I was not used to like where the cars came from. And if my wife hadn't grabbed me, I almost got hit by a bus coming flying through there. Because <laughs> you're looking oh, over yeah. in America, you look this way. You don't look the other way. I almost got killed. I would, oh, been, no. I would have been dead in York. That's crazy. That's, that's not a good thing. That would have been a bad thing, yeah. But anyway, that's a beautiful city. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Lord. it is beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. How is your little grandson doing? He's, he's great. He's great. He'd had a failed hearing test when he was born. And he's just been, he's just got back. And um, it's all good. good. So... Good, good, good. Thank you, Lord, regardless. I, I did pray for him, but whether it was just a, I don't know, birth thing or whatever, he's he's all good now. So. He's all good. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, waiting on a Leonard, I guess. I think I've coached everybody for their initial here. Um, yeah, so Steve Watley's jumping in. So <clears throat> today, um, there she is. Good, 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 good. You guys have done well. I hope. Uh, hey, Steve. Good morning. Hi. I hope you all are uh, enjoying this so far. Um, today is uh, good morning, Elena. Welcome. Good morning. To Sorry, I'm late. I feel like I'm just copying Nikki, but actually, my daughter's in labour. So if I have oh, to. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh my gosh, I want. More. I, I want more grandkids. I, I, I hope that y'all pass some of that over this way. My son has a steady girlfriend, and she's wonderful. So, that's, uh, that's at least maybe. that's at least heading towards marriage and grandchildren. But he, she, she's lovely, and so could, when, like how is she right in the center of it right now? Well, she's been sent home from hospital twice for not being far enough on, but they said they think the baby will be born today. So, oh, is it That's okay good. for you to be here with us? I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I can't do anything. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, right. That's right. Not what you can do. Okay. Well, today's a fun day, guys. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit um, and God's working in in mining for gold. Um, I, I would say that I think this is probably the distinctive characteristic. Um, I'll tell a little bit about the story of it, but um, that that formed what what is mining for gold and and, uh, and 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 takes it out of our hands and makes it unbelievably. It literally could change a life in a moment or change the world. In fact, if because God's doing it. Amen. <laughs> so let's pray and. Um, I think this may be one of my favorites just because um, he just shows up again and again as such a faithful father. So, so Holy Spirit, we invite you. Um, this session is about you and the working that you are doing in this very moment for us as your sons and your daughters. And I invite your power to come, not just your care, not just your love and your warmth, but your power would arrive right here on this Zoom call as we invite you to, to move and to teach us and to open us up to a higher level of coaching, because we're not doing it. <laughs> we're just cooperating with your purposes in people's lives. So Holy Spirit, we love you. We, we love you and, um, and want more of you. 
So come and, and enable us to, to engage this at a deeper level. Amen. Amen. All right. So all of you, believe it or not, all of you said um, that uh, the, um, this one topic, uh, and, and literally every, um, every student that I have had in this has all said, um, uh, I want to, to uh, um, grow in this one thing. They just say, this is the one I want to grow in. Can you see my slides? Is that, is that, is that clear there? Okay. So, um, you know, as you coach, you all are coaches. Um, you've all been in that place where you feel empty. You got nothing to give. You're, you're coming in like, oh my God, I got to be, I got to be on. I got to be ready. There is something to that. But there is something higher than that, and that is surrendering to the work of the Holy Spirit when you're getting ready to do your coaching. Um, so today we're going to talk about God being the refiner. I find that very freeing because it takes the responsibility off of me. I'm not in charge. I'm just a little guy from North Carolina who loves people and loves God, and I just try to show up and, and listen real good and watch real carefully for the Spirit. And he does the work. Amen. Isn't it good that the burden is not on us? Mm. And then, then just yeah. the, the engagement of cooperation with the spirit is something you will never grow out of. You will never get beyond. Um, you, it, it, is the, it is the power in mining for gold. Um, although the principles of coaching in the ICF are incredible and powerful and can be done and, and actually bring change and transformation, it goes to a completely different level when you engage the person of the Holy Spirit. So you're, you're welcoming grace, which we know is power, and you're welcoming God's ongoing work. And, and in many ways, you're doing what, you know, our DNA says, you're not, you're not, you're not trying to make something happen. You're joining in with what's already happening. And a lot of this stuff's not going to be new to you all. What I really hope to do today is you wed this with how you coach. And when you come to a coaching session, that the spirit of the Lord is, you know, is your highest and deepest desire because it take, it just goes to another level. So we want to expect in all of our coaching, the present move, like the present move of the Holy spirit right now, as we're getting ready to coach. That's a practice here in Vineyard World, but, but in, in any person that, that wants to see the kingdom in breaking, it is the work of the Spirit. So let's dig in. So you, you, when, when I come to a, a session, um, the, the number one most effective um, process that I have ever done to help the spirit show up is my preparation the 30 minutes before the session. And I don't know if that's, this is, if I'm saying something you already know, please forgive me. But the 30 minutes prior to your session is when you begin to dial your, your heart into the spirit. If you're very, very busy and you're just going 5,000 miles an hour and you don't slow down, you can, you can have a good coaching session. But when you, when you allow your spirit to be engaged with the Holy Spirit in prayer, in worship, if you will, when you show up, you're ready to work with God. <laughs> and so Philippians 1.8, uh, actually another scripture from the Old Testament, Psalm 138, verse 8. Psalm 138, verse 8 says, um, God will perfect or mature or complete that which concerned me. And the same verse in Philippians 1, Paul says, he who began a good work in you or in our cage coaching in them will be faithful to complete it so i try to come in with an attitude man god's working and when i send the prep questions out i say hey where have you seen the lord working that just gives me just a little indication what's been happening where are they seeing it? so i can start to that gives me a little bit of a radar where they're sensing the spirit working i find this really really helpful um I also find it very, very helpful to, to, to kind of dial down any level of um, uh, thoughts that I might have or want to do. I don't do it perfectly, but I try to say, okay, Lord, I, I don't really know, you know, 
there, there's something surprising maybe today that you want to do and try to humble myself to just to be a good listener. Um, I have to come back to this scripture because it, it really anchors the whole thing. And now I'll tell a little bit about the whole story of how the Holy Spirit component of this really affected me. I think I told you this, guys, this. The scripture says in Malachi 3.3, 3, he will sit, God will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi. He will. It's not a if and maybe. God's going to refine leaders who serve his people and his house, and he will do the refining of them like gold. And then they'll bring offerings in righteousness. So that's any leader you work with, anybody on your staff team, any, your, your kids, anyone He's at work refining. So when I, uh, right before I was, I had already become a coach. It was 2013. I had, uh, I had become a, a, a regional coach in my part of the country of us. And, and, uh, I was feeling really dry in the spring and uh, I was going to these evangelistic meetings and we would go to these cities and we would go out on the streets and just witness to people and and th nothing's going to show you how how little power you have to just walk the streets and, and share the gospel you know you need the power of the holy spirit so i was just really feeling dry and like i was doing so much uh in my own self and and so a friend of mine um we we're in seattle and he said he said man you should go to this little teeny presbyterian holy spirit place right near you i'm like what this guy was a holy spirit charismatic presbyterian and there's a little retreat center tiny retreat center near my house like literally like 10 minutes from here where they have conferences and he said you should go it's really wonderful and so i went there i registered there were three people in the conference and i'm like i'm thinking what you know i'm vineyard guy you know and what am i doing there's three people and I, my pride was really i'm like you know, I should know. And I, anyway, but I was hungry. I was dry. And I just went and their presentations were kind of, you know, were okay. And, and there's the guy up the front was just talking like Charlie Brown's teacher. I don't know if you know, I'm saying, rah, rah, rah. I, and I just, it, nothing was hitting until the end. And they just said, well, let's just pray for each other. <laughs> And this guy turns to me, and I, I, never, I hadn't met him up to that point. He lived in Florida or something. He just said, Holy Spirit, come, <laughs> just like the vineyard. And I'm not kidding you. The power of God hit me and just floored me, like sent me back, like past my, I fell out of my chair. It was like putting into an electrical socket. Wow. And I'm, and I'm laying on the floor just jolting just shaking under the presence and the power of the holy spirit and i, I laid there if you know virtual i don't know how long and while i'm in there that presence of the holy spirit the lord showed me a vision he said i saw a wave come um jesus was out on the water and he was he was beckoning me to come out on the water smiling just exciting like an adventure that my heart loves and when I stepped out of the boat, this surfboard came and a wave came and it, and I, and I surfed, the surf went around the world and I'm going, what in the world is that? That's the craziest thing in the world. And so when the next, so I had this encounter, I was then like, just broken. God, I, I can't do anything. I just re-engaged with the Holy Spirit. The next month, less than 30 days later, Michael Gatlin put out a, a request for the national leader of coaching that was to be a pastor. And I just put, I just felt the Lord said, do it, put my name in. And I, and I was asked to be that. I only tell that story, not to make that about me, but that at the very beginning of this whole coaching journey, I've had this ongoing desperation and need for the power and the presence of the Holy spirit. Hmm. It, it, it informed it from the beginning. And so I, every meeting, every session, every strategy session, it's like, God, what are you doing? Holy Spirit, what do you want? And what I want to say to you is, I don't know what your relationship with the Holy Spirit is today, and you might be on fire and moving, but I want to encourage you, 
to never settle as if you've got enough. <laughs> to never get to a place that, oh, I, I got this whole Holy Spirit thing because I'm a vineyard leader or I'm a charismatic. Or Please, please, please be hungry for more because I believe that the entire process of this whole mind for gold thing was birthed from him. So let me talk about our DNA for just a second. I, I'm sorry. I hope that story is not, you know, too much for you or too much about me, but I, I wanted to share it because it's my real story. And I, it's why I believe this went to a level I could never have done. So here, here we are. Um, you know, that uh, those of us and Gordon, you've been a part of the vineyard up in, uh, um, uh -huh. in the Northern Ireland that, um, excuse me, we'll go back that we, we carry in our vineyard DNA, this at the bottom there, this, this present in breaking of the kingdom of God by the Holy spirit as, as our DNA. Would you guys agree with that? That's part of who we are. That's, that's, that's what, that's the birthright, if you will, that we were given from Wimber and, you know, Bob and Penny Fulton and all of that. And, and so when I came to the national position of coaching, um, I, I prayed really deeply about this and with the encounter I just had. And in my mind, I didn't really think about it consciously. It was like, oh, well, well then coaching for us has got to be <laughs> in the dynamic inbreaking of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> And that's what birthed this whole journey of mining for gold. So I want to tie our DNA and then I want to have a discussion here. I believe when we, when we allow this DNA to come to the forefront, we as vineyard coaches, as Holy Spirit coaches, uh, and I want to say, you know, Gordon and I had a great session yesterday just about it going way beyond vineyard. I'm just saying people who've coached with the Holy Spirit, but us particularly as vineyard leaders, I think we can see more fruit if we will press into the spirit. Um, I believe that we could also share with the wider body of Christ as the vineyard has done with its music, you know, and, and a lot of different uh, working of the spirit, healing, those types of things could be another gift that we give to the spirit. I mean, to the bo larger body of Christ as we, we, we bring our unique, what would I say, flavor, you know, values to coaching. I don't think we can ever move on from this. So I'm going to stop now. <laughs> what do you think about this slide? And what do you think about our culture and history as a movement and coaching? Just, just fire away. This can be an open discussion. What do you see or hear or sense could be powerful for us with coaching? Anybody? Thoughts? To me, it's that word, um, you know, at the bottom, the present in breaking of the kingdom. It's what God is doing right now in yeah. any conversation, in any life, anywhere across the, the planet. It's about the now and being, you know, eyes wide open, ears wide open, hearts wide open, just to, 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 for that to be the reality that we live in uh, and, and that we coach in and from. So to me, yes, yes to everything you've said, but that word is the present that really is, is who we I are. I agree. And that, I, I believe that, I believe that whenever I enter with that attitude of that present in breaking, I see the spirit. When I'm kind of dull, and I'm not looking for the present, you know, it's like, I wonder if, it, I wonder if God will show up. But when I, when I press in and prepare my heart for the present in breaking, it's sort of like I'm at a, I'm at spiritual attention expecting that, like she just said. What else, guys? What I think this is powerful and needs discussion as a as, as in this mining for gold class. What other thoughts do you have? I've just got um <laughs> bear with me because I'm really feeling the Holy Spirit right now. Um and it's all sorts of I feel quite emotional. So um, but just that with coaching, I think just that holding so loosely. So if, if a coaching session is, is a piece of rope that you're hanging on to, just uh, holding it loosely that God can kind of move with, uh, along with that. And just, you know, the breakthroughs, those moments of breakthroughs yeah. come yes. and um, just speaking to those situations. And um, I, mean, I, I don't think, I think to begin with, I wasn't engaging with both. And I, I, discussed that with before but it was when I discovered that I could just be me 
in coaching yeah. and all the things that have come to that place. And it just seems like that freedom of holding, holding loosely in order to allow God to, uh, I don't know if that's making any sense. Holding but loosely I, meaning, what, what does that look like? What does holding loosely mean for you? So the whole session so that you, you, you're not in control of that session. It's, it's God that's in control of that session and um, that he can change the direction that that will go at any point. Good, um, good, and just allowing good. God to, to come into that. And so it's not about how we feel. And, and, and I have been practicing that half an hour before and just praying and asking God to come. And, mm -hmm. and it's been really powerful. Nice. But learning to, to just, um, yeah, it's, it's about the control. We're not controlling it and how it goes. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And letting that freedom just as if a piece of string or rope just runs through your fingers, just as he comes in and, and guides and leads in that session. Mm, good, good, good. But yeah. I'm wow. just, it just excites me, just the fact that, it, yeah, this whole, if, if it's as a tool that we're using, that God does come in and just speak to people in such an, a profound way that each and every session can be um, so amazing because God's spirit just is for that person. And, and that's, that's what your session's about, moving them forward and, and bringing them into the fullness of all that God has for them. Amen. Um, Amen. But I, just as you're talking, I, I don't know, I just I could boil right now. I just, mm. it's, sorry, but yeah. yeah. Let's just cooperate. Lord, we just ask that you give her more right now in the name of Jesus. Just give her more right now. Let the Holy Spirit just, whatever you're doing, just keep, keep pouring in more because we need it, God. We don't need a little bit. We don't need a trickle. We need an outpouring of this. Uh, wow, good, good. We thank you. So uh, some of the rest of you who haven't shared, I, 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 don't want, I don't want to move quickly beyond this because I don't, I don't think it's just a, this is not a small thing. Can I ask a really practical question? Yes. Which is, um, I'm totally on board, although I, I don't think I'm very good at it yet with this, uh, the whole Holy Spirit thing. But how do you balance that up with preparation? I mean, do you have prepared questions that you then let go of? Or do you not prepare at all, except in terms of prayer and inviting Yeah, I, I was going to go to that next um but I'll okay, go now. Sorry. I'll go now if you want. Um, so I don't believe this in any way takes away from the structure of coaching, from an, and the hourglass, from five R's, if that's the paradigm we're using, from the steps of deep listening, asking great questions, uh, determining right next steps, and then prayer. It doesn't take away from any of the ICF things. I think all the ICF things are very valuable. This just takes it to a completely another dimension of working. So um, the, the only way I know to, do, to describe it is, is, uh, is flying. And that when you first learn to fly, um, there's a lot of complexity going on. I mean, when I first learned to fly, I thought it was going to kill us, you know, every time I grabbed the controls. But after a while, you start to really understand how to fly that thing and fly it. And then you first you just do simple takeoffs and landings. By the end, you know, I was doing all kinds of maneuvers that would blow your mind in a helicopter from doing it over and over. But the same controls, the same principles of flight were true when I was inexperienced versus when I was very experienced during the Gulf War. When you're doing coaching, I just think you gotta do it over and over and over. I don't think this means absence of structure, absence of process, absence of discipline to send your prep question. I, I think all that remains. But I think when you enter in, what Nicholas said is valuable. Lord, I expect your present in breaking into this session today, and I'm looking for it. <laughs> and in faith, I'm anticipating it. So does that help at all? I, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not trying to blow it out, but I think you've got to get lots of reps in of coaching and then you got to begin to get with the Holy Spirit and see what it'll do. And, 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 you know, and every pilot doesn't fly the same way, but, but, but the, all the controls are the same <laughs> for every pilot that flies that aircraft. What do you hear in what I'm saying? Uh, that both are important. Um, but that the, I suppose it's like, um, I don't know, that the structure and everything is like an outline, but the colouring in is done yeah. by the Holy Spirit. Good word. That's a good point. Colour. 
Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Steve or Gordon, any thoughts on this? This is one I don't want to move fast off this. Yeah, so, uh, so I mean, I just want to say that I, I'm just really on message with this. I, and I, I believe the Holy Spirit is, is in this thing about a gift to the wider church. Hmm. You know, I, I, hmm. I really, you know, right from the start, I've, you know, I've kind of seen this, you know, that hmm. it's not, it, it's not just a vineyard thing we're not just mm. you know protecting our own our own little aim on gold claim but mm. it's something it is something like that and i just so I, I i really i really think this is uh this is something to the wider body of christ wow wow gordon what's your thoughts as a vineyard friend <laughs> <laughs> um I mean, I think the Holy Spirit can't be contained. I, I think I've found him everywhere. And um, it is that kind of meta narrative, again, where God is working out his purposes in the world and that he chooses to use clean, available, fillable vessels yeah. of all shapes and flavors. I think Vineyard took it to a whole new level. Mm. I, think, I think Wimber was anointed in a way that I've rarely seen um, with real authority and, and, and power in ministry. Mm. Uh, and yet I think the Holy Spirit is also fabulously respectful mm. and gentle. Mm. Um, and I, I, was, I did my first Mining for Gold coaching session yesterday afternoon. Uh -huh. um, and there was, there was a real flow in that, that, that I believe was a flow of the Spirit. Mm. And I felt very tuned in to him and what he was, what he was doing. And it's that kind of, and I'd be interested, Tom, just to reflect a little on that kind of creative tension between ministry and coaching. Because certainly as I was listening to someone's story, the Lord gave me a scripture uh, and a picture that, that were really they came very strongly when I was listening to a really powerful, impactful story. Um, and it was a coaching session, but there was ministry going on as well. I'll, I'll clearly, let me clearly speak to that. There, I should have had a slide with this, but I don't. So just take notes. Um, I do not interrupt this flow of coaching for prophecy, Yeah. share scripture, I will rarely, but sometimes when a spirit's telling me, I will tell a brief story. Uh, and I did this morning because I felt the Lord wanted me to, too, but uh, I try not to take too much time to focus on me. Uh, because even sometimes when I'm sharing a scripture, it turns the attention and the spotlight onto me. So I try my best to keep it very brief and, and maybe just affirming if I say, if a scripture comes to mind, I could say something like, wow, that's, it's a lot like such and such, but keep the spotlight, keep the attention on the coachee because it's really for them. It's not for me. Yeah. That's and cool. then at the end, when I pray, I'll often pray the scripture I heard or I'll, I pray specifically into the action set. I pray for the Holy spirit to come on the action steps. That's what I pray. And I, I, but I do not prophesy in the middle. I don't, I might say, like I just did with uh, Nikki, I said, Lord, come right now. <laughs> I might do that. Holy Spirit, more. You know, I might pray more. But I don't try to get into a deep ministry. As we know, altar ministry or prayer ministry or prophetic ministry, I don't. Un and, I, and even at the end, I stay in that kind of place of humility, like, hey, can I just share something I'm sensing? Would you like to hear what I'm sensing? <laughs> And, and then leave it with them, you know, five-step prayer model. I, um, this is not God's word, thus said the Lord. You know, that's not our DNA. Just, hey, I just really sense this. And if, if this, is this helpful for you? Oh, yeah, it's really helpful. Yeah. So what, what do you guys think of that? That's an important question. Any comments on that? That's really important. You will lose your coaching acuity. If that, any, any comments on that? I, I, as I was talking, and I think it ties in with, with Gordon's question and, and your point, um, I keep thinking about Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel 37, where Ezekiel's told, 
prophesy to this, prophesy to that. And I sense the Holy Spirit saying, like, it's like that for us, but we, what he's saying, question those bones, question that flesh, mm. question that skin. Mm. Mm. And there's something in the, the question that is prophetic that sort of opens it up for, some, for the Holy oh, Spirit to go there with someone so um, and and the structure in ezekiel of the you know the bones the flesh and, and the order of things it it has that same feel around the the structure of, of coaching as we follow that mm. process that we're talking about that's fantastic i've never heard of that that's fantastic but that's i know i'm doing that i'm yeah. asking questions into the the word of the lord like i'm trying to discern what's the word of the lord but i'm doing it through questions and drawing out that's really good i like that other other thoughts on what i said that structure is not it it's very i would say it's very important but it's submitted to the spirit and um best, the best coaching sessions still hold the integrity of a of a structured coaching session any comments on that or questions that's a really great really great question no, anybody? Okay, so I wanna say this, and I've seen this happen in coaching, but I've seen it happen in every aspect of kingdom ministry, and that is this. John Wimber um, warned us of what he called the routinization of charisma. Has, have y'all heard that phrase? Do you know what that, have you heard that phrase before? Uh, what sure. tends to happen is things that begin in dynamic Holy Spirit cooperation and explode onto the scene with the inbreaking power and presence and demon busting revival culture transforming spirit or just could be as simple as a person realizing they need to get counseling i mean whatever or you beginning coaching the danger in anything is to descend down into only the process itself does that communicate that we routinize we re, 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 routinize it i can't even say it that we that we just coach five hours but you know we just do our thing and we lose this expectation of the inbreaking and the power and the presence so for instance a methodist church that began with great power I mean, I was, I was up in uh, Newcastle and one of the guys up there, Tom White, was praying where John Wesley prayed. I just think that was so cool. I've gone to the places in Oxford where he was and I've been, in, I've been where Wesley was all over England. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's like here. How far has the Methodist church fallen from that dynamic inbreaking by methods, which are, I mean, what's wrong with methods? Nothing when they're engaged with the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit. You with me? But even vineyard, no matter who we are, doesn't matter. We can descend into emptiness and lack of power when we just get into a habit. I don't know if I'm, am I, am I communicating? If we just let coaching become a habit and we're not expecting the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, our coaching will just dry. It'll become dry. I know so many coaches today. Yeah, coaching's really dry. And I'm looking, well, When's the last time you've seen God move powerfully and change a life? It doesn't get dry if I, if I let the spirit lead. And so any comments to this? I, that ha I had to share this slide. Uh, any, have you ever heard that term? Any comments on that? Nope. Okay. Very important. Please don't, don't go there. So what can you be confident of? You can be confident of several things that the spirit is doing. Um, you can be confident in, in the spirit. You can have a confidence in every session that he's working. You might not know what he's doing, but he's working. The Bible's clear. He's always working. It says, I will sit as a refiner. God's been working in that leader's life. All you're trying to do is find where. You're just being Sherlock Holmes and trying to find the clues where he's been at. That's why you send prep questions and you say, hey, where have you seen? That's what I said. Where have you seen the Lord working lately? What are you excited about? How, how have... How has God met you this week? Great question. Just stuff like that. And then you also can be confident he knows better than you what's needed in that person's life. So 
So when you come and go, Oh Lord, I don't know, but Lord, I show me, I want to know what's best for her or him. He will show you. He will, he'll answer that prayer because he wants to refine them. You can be confident. He says, if you call, I'll come. So I never do a session without praying and I invite the Holy Spirit. Now you might not do that, but I strongly recommend that you open all your sessions and you say, Holy Spirit, I'd like you to come right now. I mean, that might sound really routine, but when you pray it in faith, it's not routine. The Bible says if you say it, you know, in faith, he'll move a mountain. So I pray, I try to get my spirit ready. And then I say, Holy Spirit, I invite you to come. And I prayed in faith with expectation. You can always know and confident that the Father and the Son and the Spirit, all those three, are all working as one for this individual, the Father and the Son and the Spirit. I've got a typo there. Um, uh, and then the Father wants, he wants them to flourish. That, I always feel that same thing. I think, you know, the Lord, you want them to flourish. You're not, this is not random. You want them with more freedom. Jesus said he came to have more of life and life and more abundantly. So I know flourishing is the call of God and what he wants. So I go into a coaching session saying, Lord, what would more, what would more flourishing look like for him? What, Lord, show, show me what more flourishing, what more life, what more, um, uh, freedom and, and fulfillment and fruit would look like for the person. And, and I, you know that he wants that. So just, re, you know, reiterating scriptures that maybe have you heard so many times, if you try to coach without the vine, you're not going to have a lot of fruit. But if you increase your desire and hunger and ask and you'll receive, Lord, make, help me become more in line with you. Jesus, as you work in this person's life, he will answer that prayer and you'll become a more effective coach. So I want to do a, a demo, live demo in just a minute and then we'll get into breakout sessions. But um, I just find this scripture really anchors me in who's doing the work. Paul says this, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you the hope of glory so when i when i read this i i i come in with a mindset there is gold in the image of christ in every human i'm getting ready to work with in coaching that they carry a treasure in an earthen vessel second corinthians 4 6 and 7 which is christ in them the hope of glory so the spirit does what I mean, in the, book, in the book, I talk all about all the things the Spirit does. The Spirit exalts Jesus. Jesus is in people. The image of him is in them, in their, in their sweet spot, in their identity and design. The Christ is in people, the hope of glory. So I go in asking God to make known what are the riches of the glory in this person. Now, that's, that might sound excessive. When I go in with that attitude, he shows it to me. I don't know if y'all are following what I'm saying. I, I, I believe this with all my heart. If I go in looking for gold and the gold is the person of Jesus, I know theologically and dynamically the spirit will cooperate with Christ to show me that. I, I don't know if you guys agree with that. And so he says, him we preach, warning every man, teaching every man in all wisdom that we might present them. That's the whole sanctification refining process is that right there. Teleos is perfect, mature, complete. And then I end with this. To this end, I'm laboring, striving according to who's working? His working, which works in me mightily. So what do I see in that? Jesus and the Spirit particularly is the one that does this work of refining, helps me coach better, helps me see the gold, helps me ask the next question. My best sessions are when I'm just like resting in the Holy Spirit and joyful and out of my own flesh and carnality. And I just go, Jesus, come. And, and, and my spirit's light and open and waiting. And the spirit just gives you questions. How, how many of you ever felt in your coaching like, oh, my gosh, that question didn't come from me. How many of you ever felt that? Like, yeah. that's from the spirit. I didn't do that. That is amazing. That's what it's about. 
And so we want more of that. And all I'm trying to get you to do is mining for gold coaches is position yourself for the inbreaking of God. Any thoughts on that scripture before I move on? Any, anything that strikes you there? I've used this, so I, I've worn out this slide, but I, I'm never going to stop using it. <laughs> I've worn this thing out. I've shown this, I've shown this in probably <laughs> 50 different locations, and it resonates every single time. What are you doing, and what are you doing it from? So I'm not going to belabor it, but you know and you can feel when the energy is human and you and striving and you get tired and worn out. There's nothing wrong. I mean, you, can, you can row but you, you can only get so far and it's, and it doesn't accomplish what the wind does. So I just, just, ne I never want us to lose that mining for gold is where it's on the left. Mining for gold is where wind is blowing. Mining for gold is where there's an effortlessness. There's a rest. There's an adventure. There's a joy. I mean, rowing, they're ro good rowing teams, you know, for Oxford and Cambridge. And, but the spirit of God doesn't operate that way. The Spirit of God is a supernatural force of power that comes and gives us strength. A couple more points, and then we'll uh, do a demo here. Um, I would just say, what are you looking for? You're always looking for, um, have your eyes open to their um, body language. When they brighten up, all the good things, like when they, when they drop and their energy drops. <laughs> um, when... When you hear their, the tone of their voice gets higher or they start speaking faster, that's indication of, of their, there's energy in that and there's life in that and there, there, or passion in that. And that's really, really be, care, be, be, be uh, aware and, and carefully watching and observing, I guess I would say. Watch where the energy rises and falls. Watch where it feels hopeless or watch where it starts to feel hopeful. Right there is where the spirit's working. Right at that hinge point. Hopeless, Christ in you, the hope of glory. When it starts to turn hopeful, the Spirit's starting to work. When they say things like, you know, the Lord's already been speaking to me, you, you know you're right there. Because what? He's already been working. We're only joining. And that you're in a good place when they say, you know, that's interesting. He said, <laughs> how many times? Did and that, that's because the Lord's been doing it. Um, there are also patterns. And great coaching, particularly the, I, I dropped some stuff on you guys over there, the mentors of triple loop coaching. You remember that? Those of you are mentors. Um, if you've never done that, I, I haven't trained all of you here. But uh, triple loop coaching is not just coaching of a task. It's coming back around and saying, well, what is the bigger pattern that's around this? And where have you seen this before? Or even back, what does this reveal about your character and who you want to be in the future versus just this task you're into. I mean, I'm, I'm doing some deeper level coaching stuff here, but you want to look at patterns. You want to be, you want to, you're coaching to not just be focused on the now, but what's the larger freedom and wholeness that God is after. I mean, this comes from years and years of you guys being leaders in the body of Christ, but don't just coach a task, right? Coach the person and then coach them in the context of all that God is doing, that's to me a master coach. A master coach doesn't just say, you want to lose five pounds. You want to, you want to plant a new service or a new campus. That's great. But you want to plant a new service and campus. And what's underneath that for you? Where do you see the Lord moving? What's your relationship going to be to this campus? How, how are you going to maintain this level of balance in your life where you're thriving and rest and add a completely new dimension to your ministry. Are you following me? I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just talking. I'm mentoring you right now, but you're coach beyond the task to the greater narrative the spirit is doing. And then lastly, how aligned I want to do with design. This is never stops in my mind. I'm always thinking what's their sweet spot. I never stop. Like from the moment I meet them, Hey, what do they do? What, what, because why, let me just ask you, why do you in Mining for Gold always need to, so instead of me just saying it, it may be obvious, but why do you always need to have this in mind? Talk, talk, talk to me. Why should you never leave this? Anybody? 
because the, the aim is to bring them into the fullness of all that God has for them um, and their full potential. So if you're not looking for that, you, you are just looking for the task and the things that are happening that right exactly. now. Whereas it's the bigger picture of how God sees that person. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. More, others. Why, is this, why does this change the whole thing? I mean, I, I think it changes everything because because that, that kind of spot in the center is, uh, in a sense, it, it's the clarity spot. You know, I mean, it's it's funny you talk to people, and and they might have lots of options and lots of things that are in their mind, uh, and they and they can't make a decision. But that that kind of point in the in the center where all the clarity is is where they can start moving forward. Um, uh, I mean. I mean, interesting, you know, it'd be interesting to get some feedback from people because uh, about how it works, because some people just not, just not aware and they, they're not, they're not, they're kind of not, uh, they, they, they kind of don't see it. And I wonder where we go where people, in a sense, can't see that they, that they even have a sweet spot. Um, that, that is the work. That is the work. That is what we're doing. That's why you have to get better at it. You, in my opinion, to mine for gold, you, there's not another option. There's not another bridge. There's not another gate. You're trying to say, who are you in Christ and your identity? But who has God made you be? Because the wind of the spirit is blowing on that sail right now, and they may not know it. And so you, if they don't know it, you, you may need to dig deeper back into um, those design tools. Or they may be, have knowledge of design tools, but their character and their identity is so wounded they can't catch the wind. They can't even see themselves as a loved whatever they are, you know, a loved design. So Steve, you just, that's what I'm saying. Now you're getting, now you're getting the depth of it. The two wings, you go in identity, design, identity, design, identity, all Holy Spirit, but you're a lot of times, a design is a design. You're a zebra or you're a horse or you're a giraffe or whatever you are, but uh, the two together, I just don't think this, this is the essence of mining for gold. So I don't know if that helps Steve. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. And, and I mean, it's interesting, this, this diagram, in a sense, doesn't put the kind of identity thing there. It doesn't. Um, uh, but you're right. It kind of, in a sense, it overshadows everything or, or it joins is the, to everything. You know, it's the, the atmosphere you, around the whole thing. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's right. And so, and so if, if, if they can't, match you know they can't get one maybe they maybe they you know need to get the other you know right other comments yeah. haven't we talked before about that middle section is about redemption it's about yeah. that yeah. that um that person's uniqueness as it was always created yeah. to be alive in christ and yeah. to radiate the the presence of of god yes in that person uniquely no, no one else has that sweet spot in the whole right. ever in history and ever will have and it's finding that uniqueness where that person is 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 re fully redeemed but um yeah i guess all that they are all that they have is is in that that bit it is it's and if you if you to, to follow on what you're saying Christ in you, the hope of glory is in the yellow. That's why we call it colored it gold. Christ in you, that treasure, those riches are right there. The riches, the treasure, the gold is right there. In them, redeemed. And so what does Satan do? He mars the image of Christ in us. We are all given it. And then what does he do? He wounds and he lies and he defeats and he attacks. And then we don't look like Christ. And I think what you're saying to Steve is each one of those circles like you say can be skewed and pulled and mm -hmm. and, and we don't see what mm. our passion is it gets lost in in the mm. world and our our job our call is to to help people to figure out initially probably like focus on on one of those bits to help them make headway on understanding yes. what is my passion what does that mean and then what is my worry and then slowly it kind of they overlay so good so good yes and so like when i'm doing it i'm always asking lord what is where where do you want to go today to help get clarity because like steve said 
the more clarity, the more momentum. The more I know who God made me to be, then I can walk in fullness. The more I understand why, why am I passionate about this? How do God just use me? What's my, what's my design? The, this one is just dynamic. And, and he's redeeming this part of people. And what I find a great privilege is we get to be a part of it. It kind of feels less overwhelming as well to think circle by circle. <laughs> you know, it, from, my, from my point of view as a coach, to, to maybe just spend some time thinking and praying for the person I'm, I'm coaching around mm -hmm. one of those things. Because the bigger picture can feel, like Steve says, if people don't even really know where they're at with stuff, it can feel like it's all moving. Whereas to actually focus and maybe yeah. even fly that plane to passion one week and sit there yeah. with someone is, is a good thing. Yes, 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 yes. Other comments from any of the others of this is the essence of mining for gold right here. Hmm. No, anyone have a comment? Okay. So I just um, have tried to give you what I, how I view it. Um, how I walk with these, um, um, so these are, I want you to take a picture of this cause you're going to do this in your groups. We're going to break out in just a minute. You can get a picture on your phone of these and whatever. And it's, I just do it cause it's easy. <laughs> um, but I want you to do this and practice some Holy spirit type coaching, uh, here in just a second. So, um, but I'm going to do this with someone, um, all right, do you, you guys got that? Do you need any longer with that? Do you got a photo of it? Okay, let's stop sharing. So I'd like to just do a, a, live, a live coaching on the Holy Spirit with whomever um, would like. And would, who would like to, for me to just coach them today around the Holy Spirit? Anybody? Okay, Leonard, you'd like me to do that? Okay. So why don't we just all, all just kill our... Uh, videos. I'm going to do this for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then you're going to break up into your groups and you're going to take those, those, uh, those um, questions and just work with each other and just invite the spirit to come. He'll do it every time. So kill your videos there. Uh, Nikki, if you would do that. Uh, just, yeah, there you go. Great. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to, um, we're going to just share Leonard. Welcome. Thank you for being a brave girl. <laughs> I'm so glad you're on this course. Let me just uh, pray for you and um, let's just see what God has. Sound good? <laughs> yeah, Father, thank you for your daughter. I just thank you so much uh, for her and, and just the, the beauty and the depth and the breadth of, of her, her gifts, her history, uh, her wiring, um, her, her, her sweet spot and the ability to do what she's done, but Lord, the more that you have for her. And I just invite you, Holy Spirit, come right now, right here, right now into this conversation. I just submit my mind to you and we submit our hearts to you that you can make something clear, help, more helpful, better for her, um, that she thrive. I pray for a greater level of thriving right now in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what you do. So come, Spirit. Make this better than I could ever do it or we could ever do it. You're so alive right now. We invite you. Come, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. 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 How are you? Well, I'm okay, thank you. Good. Uh, I think Good. I'm okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Where have you sensed the Holy Spirit at work? In, in any part of your life in the last month, say, in the last month, where do you sense the spirits at work? Um, one of the people that uh, I'm coaching online for VCUKI is, um, she's somebody who's incredibly spiritually aware. And actually that really helps. It makes her quite easy to coach in the sense that I feel like there's a lot of expectation in the virtual room from the beginning okay. and so it's like I mean I say very little with her because she's a bit of a seamless garment you know she um, okay. 
but just when I think, I wonder if this going is going anywhere, if I need to intervene, she'll say, oh, the Lord's just shown me this and, and thank you for that. And I think I haven't said anything. Um, how does that, does that help you? Does that make you feel like you're, uh, you do you sense that he's using you in that time? What, why do you share that? Yeah, where, yeah. where do you see the spirit in that? I lost her. Are the rest of you there? Yep. Oh, I don't know what I did. I lost her. She froze up. Okay, you're still there, guys? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're here. Uh, yeah, I yeah. guess it's early. Uh, it's uh, maybe on her side. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. We'll wait for her to get back in. Um, that's sad. Lord, we just pray against the enemy to from stopping what you're wanting to do in her life right now. Yeah, she's gone. Oh, I lost you. Okay, you went away, but you're back. Good. Okay. <laughs> That's the enemy. He just doesn't want you to come into the, whatever he has for you today. So we bind him in Jesus' name. Well, so why you share that because obviously you've seen the spirit. What's going on there for you in that session with that lady? Um, Well, I suppose sometimes I feel like he's working despite me. <laughs> That's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the reason that I, I wanted to be coached on this is that I've become aware as you're talking that whilst I do see the Holy Spirit intervene, and I know just what you're talking about, it's not a foreign language at all, but that I, it's almost like I'm between riding a bike and having training wheels on the bike, and I don't quite trust that I won't fall off if I take the training wheels off. So okay. I think that I am too self-reliant. So okay. the reason I feel like it really works with her is a lot because her okay. expectations are really high. Okay. But sometimes when I'm coaching other people, I feel like, well, I need to be able to bring something out of this. So if the Holy Spirit doesn't turn up, I mean, it's a terrible admission to have to make because I know that he'll always turn up, but this is, I'm being honest here now. That's what makes this beautiful and this makes amazing that you would do this is that you'd be that vulnerable. So if, I, if I'm hearing you correctly, your greatest challenge is your own confidence in the Holy Spirit coming when you pray and invite him. Yes, I guess that's it. Mm -hmm. yes. and and has this been something just related to coaching or is this something that you've seen wider in, a, in the narrative of your in of all the things that you do is it mainly just with coaching because you're new to it or do you have this sense in other areas of your ministry and life sometimes i have it in ministry um but in one sense, ministry is easier because that's all we're doing. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't understand. Okay. Well, in ministry, you're just inviting the Holy Spirit to come and then you can be quiet for a long time. Oh, I see. You're not engaged. Okay. It's not as much of an active engagement is what you mean. Okay. Well, it, it, not v verbally. Probably. Verbally. Right, right, right. Um, and so that's easier so when you coach what do you find challenging then about the engagement of the holy spirit where would you say your biggest challenge is if you were to if i were to be let's pretend i'm your i'm your uh, client i'm gonna coach tom you don't know tom what's going on inside of you as you approach that when, when it relates to the Holy Spirit, what would, what would be going on inside as you would approach the coaching? What's going, what goes on inside? Um, well, I think it's, it's probably the need to perform myself. Have I worked hard enough finding good questions for Tom? Will these be the ones that 
really work for him. Um, Got it. And, and, and none of those are bad, are they? I mean, those are good. Those are good things, right? Oh, they listen uh, terrible when I say them out loud. No, 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 no. So, so I prepare. I, I think, I pray, I, I, I try to engage. What, for you, what would, what would be the difference if you had a high level of confidence? How would you approach your coaching if you approached it from a high level of confidence that the spirit was going to break in every single time? How would, you, how would your coaching be different? How would your preparation be different if you operated from a, a complete 100% confidence he's coming? How would, you, how would your coaching uh, practices and skills and techniques change? That's a really interesting question. Uh, I think I'll probably pray more for them and worry less. Um, I, I would maybe even write that down. <laughs> just so that you capture it. I, I, just so that you capture it. Because I, I don't want to, because I think the Lord is doing something here. I can feel him doing something. So, okay, that may be just an action step. But, okay, what else? You're, 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 you're highly confident. You, you know he's coming. And you, in other parts, maybe in ministry, you're confident he's going to come. But in coaching, it feels wobbly and the training wheels i love that by the way i love that analogy what w w you riding a bike fast coaching no training wheels what does it look like paint a picture of you confident coaching uh, with Holy spirit i'd feel a lot freer freer uh i think i'd be able to uh, pause more Okay. Um, Pause more. I yeah. think there wouldn't be any fear of disappointing the person. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I, I'd encourage you to write those down. Just pa pausing. No, f I'm gonna give use your words. No fear of disappointment. Just just so that you can go back to these. That's just for your good. Pausing. No fear of disappointment. Um, what was the first one? I'm praying. I'm praying. I'm praying more for more less. I wrote that what down. Else? What else? What else? Those are good. Those are really good. Um, well, I would expect to see fruit and progress. Okay. Expectation. Right. Maybe write that word down. I'd have expectation. Um, okay. What else? Maybe one or two more. Um, I'd expect to see things uh, unlock. Um, so maybe some breakthroughs, some yeah, real, yeah. real, real yeah. tangible change. Maybe that, maybe write that down. Maybe one more. What else? One more that you would, you would really, if you were confident and you weren't on training wheels anymore, your coaching in the Holy Spirit would look like what? Any one more. Um, more of a sense of his presence throughout rather than sporadically. Got it. Good. Continual Good. Write, presence. Write that down. Write that. That's beautiful. Oh, that was beautiful. So take a look at the list for a second. Just, just hold the list in front of you and just, just look at it. What kind of coaching would that be for you if, you, if that were going on? Be How would that would be fantastic. How would that feel? as a coach if that was your that was your every time experience well i would really look forward to every session <laughs> <laughs> okay what else what else if that was your that was how coaching was for you every time i think uh i have an overdeveloped sense of responsibility in a number of areas in my life and this is one of them and i think that some, i would be able to just not feel irresponsible, but know that the weight of that responsibility is on God. That is huge. I mean, that's the biggest statement you've made so far. Yeah. So what do you think the Holy Spirit's inviting you into based on the statement you just made? What's the Holy Spirit wanting to do for a Leonard's coaching? You always do this. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? I always do this. I always do what? Huh? Well, you know, I'm just getting it out there and now you're saying right you've got to do something um 
Uh, What's the spirit doing? What does he want for you in your coaching? He, he, he wants the training wheels off the bike. He wants me to feel confident that I can ride. Yeah, but you just said something just a few minutes ago. Where, what does he want to do with the weight, the weight, the responsibility of coaching? Lift it off. Put it in your own words. What does the spirit want that would bring freedom and life for you, for your coaching? You, in your own words. You just said it, but develop, make it, what I'm saying, trying to, I'm trying to reach clarity. What? To take the weight so that I'm free to listen. It's about freedom, I think. I'm standing in my own way. I can see that. Good, good. You're doing great. You're getting clear. Now turn it into a statement. The Holy Spirit wants to fill in the blank for me and my coaching. Fill in the blank. Holy Spirit wants to, your words. wants to take Good. that heavy responsibility Good. from me Good. and allow me to be free to listen to him. Woohoo! Jesus. Wow. Right. Please, please capture that. I'm taking, I'm writing it down. And then we'll just dwell with that and we can, we can close shortly after that. That's beautiful. Fantastic. And read it back to me, to us out loud. I've forgotten the end of it now. The Holy Spirit wants to take that heavy responsibility from me and free me to listen to him. Free me and free me to listen to him. So he can work, right? Or whatever. So he can, he, so he's carrying the load. All right, look at that and read it out loud again. And then let's, let's draw to a conclusion here. The Holy Spirit wants to take that heavy responsibility from me and free me to listen to him throughout the session nice nice well done why is that powerful how does that answer your question that you began with of the anxiety and you said you, you one of your words was i'm getting in my own way how does that narrative change your entire coaching practice well it's the more of him and less of me that I need to pray yeah. before every session Yeah. Um, in, in faith that that's a prayer that he really wants to answer. Yeah. Good. Prayer and faith. I would just encourage, I'm mentoring you now and not coaching, but I'd say go to Philippians 1, 6, go to Malachi 3, 3, Isaiah 38. Uh, I mean, Psalm 138 verse eight, he who began a good work in them, right? Yeah will be faithful. He will sit as a refiner of leaders. I'm mentoring you now, not coaching, but yeah. I'm just pouring where you can go to the scriptures and, and that can be your prayer time. And you can just go, Hey God, I'm just a Leonard who loves coaching and I'm sort of good at this thing. We both agreed that you're sort of good at this and just Lord, take it to another level. Cause it's you and I love doing this. So come and no responsibility. So how does that statement feel to your heart? And then we'll come to an action step. Uh, well, almost too good to be true. <laughs> that's, that's, we know that's the Lord. <laughs> good, yeah. good, good, good. What will you do now? What's your action step? Form this now into a practice that you will engage with going forward based on this session today. What, what will you do? Well, I'm coaching twice tomorrow. So before both those sessions, I will look at those scriptures and yeah. I will pray those things yeah. into myself as well as praying for the coachee. Nice. Nice. And if you do that, how do you, how do you think it might change things? Well, I'll be hoping to see breakthrough and, and, uh, I and wanna, progress I, in you absolutely, but, but I want to turn attention, not to them, not to them, not talking about them. What's the difference for you inside? Not them. Yeah. You will. Look, if you're resting and you do that, but what's going on inside of you? Uh, more freedom. Less anxiety. Uh, 
less anxiety. Yeah, from, from the heaviness. Because I think I said to you before that I always, I usually feel good after a session, but yeah. I never look forward to them because yeah. it just feels like a pressure. Yeah, so the pressure be gone. Well, I'm so proud of you. Let me pray for you, okay? So Holy Spirit, what a delightful session we've had here. And I just invite your power. I can see why the devil tried to turn the camera off. Because Lord, you want to come now by your spirit and, 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 and have her mount up with wings upon eagles. That's freedom. Yeah. As she waits on you. Isaiah's, Isaiah 40, 31 is another scripture. Father, would you cause wind to come into her coaching and a freedom like an eagle in the sky that there is no heavy responsibility, not a little bit, not even a little, none. Freedom to ride that bike fast, to soar like an eagle in her coaching. And we just thank you for the freedom and, and the fruit. Yes, the fruit in their lives, but more that she does this from rest. In the power of the Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank right, you. Guys, bring, you're Thank welcome. You. Bring, your, bring your videos back. So, Linda, I want to start with you. How did that feel? Is that really, what did that feel like? Um, really good. But, you know, interesting because it felt really hard work to begin with. It and I, 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 I think that the reason I know the Holy Spirit is working is because my immediate feeling as you started to talk to me was this isn't going to work wow look at um, that and i thought gosh where's that coming from huh why why wouldn't it work Interesting. Um, wow and i think you know i, I do feel like uh, I mean i was actually thinking this morning well i'm not going to offer to be coach because i've got things on my <laughs> mind i've got you know elena is is going to give birth and yeah um, but then as soon as you said about the holy spirit i thought no that i've got to it's oh, got to be me bless your heart okay. i love your heart awesome guys other others, what'd you see what'd you like what'd you observe as i did that session with the holy spirit did you see the holy spirit by the way because <laughs> he was moving what give me your feedback what'd you see it's fantastic okay. it was very exciting sorry steve no, no, carry on there. No, go ahead. What's exciting? Here. Nikki, what was what was fantastic? What was exciting? It was just so easy. It was so easy and so profound at the same time that Lynyrd was able to just uh, kind of think through those steps and, and the freedom come that she's, she, somebody's just clicked with her that she can move forward with such confidence in him, in the Holy Spirit. And it was, it was just wonderful to see. I was clapping behind just that's <laughs> great. That's fantastic. I love it. What did you see in the structure that I did? Did you? What did you notice from a coaching stance? So we got a rational part of our brain, and the Holy Spirit side. What did I do as a coach? I, I think it was just lifting off those layers and, and coming to the deeper issue that was be, beneath some of those things. Good. Good. So so yeah, layers, uh, clarity, a lot of language in that one, specific mm -hmm. language. Um, what else? What else did you all see? There's a lot going on there. <laughs> and I was just I mean, trying so, to follow the Holy Spirit. So what? Yeah. Deep. Uh, yeah. So the, the thing I, I really noticed, Tom, was, so, I mean, uh, uh, you know, apart from the, just, I mean, it's just amazing the, the way that you, that you just show people that you support them. And, you know, there's just something about the way you coach uh, that I'm sure uh, Ellen had, you know, felt really safe during that, as well, even if she did feel uncomfortable at times. But just uh, just a way that you you managed to take what appeared to be something uh, in a sense outside um uh, you know this is the situation and were able to focus it were able to get to focus completely on what the holy spirit you know on 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 god instead of the situation so that was that kind of real uh, real change of focus you know towards towards the end where instead of thinking about the situation and then it was thinking about what the holy spirit was actually going to do and was doing and so to me that was the key of uh, you know i don't know again and i don't know what you felt you know was the key throughout the whole thing well let's ask her what do you think yeah. the key was elena what was the key for you what was the key what turned it for you I think um, you're very good at concretizing things which 
in some ways seem not very concrete. So making me write things down so I can look at them and making me keep repeating things exactly. um, You're and not exactly. letting me get away with, well, I think it would be better. Yeah. Um, and sort of vague general statements, I think is really, really helpful, uh, particularly with somebody like me who tends not to be, you know, I'm a big picture person. It's all exactly. very artistic and um, I don't really want to be pinned down. Um, so right. it's painful, but incredibly useful, incredibly useful. There you go. See, so I coached her. I had knowledge of her. She's a big picture girl. Easy, like breathing. The detail and the concretization, not so easy. <laughs> what does she need? The thing that's not easy. So I felt the spirit say, the spirit said to me, have her write it down and then have her repeat it multiple times. That's what the spirit said to me. And I just did it. <laughs> but, but it came out of compassion, knowledge, and awareness of her, some areas that she could struggle with. But it was a gift at the same time, the mu doing those muscles. And I didn't do that. I felt like the spirit gave me that. So I, anyway, <laughs> Steve, does that help? Like yeah. just knowing her, sensing, I, the spirit kept saying, have her say it over and then write down. And then right in the middle, the spirit said to me, paint a picture of her doing it the way she dreams of doing it. And that's a coaching technique. What's your, what's your future look like where this is amazing and thriving? Paint a picture of me what thriving would look like in you doing whatever you're, you're coaching is a huge ICF sort of any, any great coach says, well, what do you really want? And what would be amazing and fantastic? So, so those are what I'm trying to say to you, Steve, is coaching techniques and the spirit. Does that help at all? Yeah. Other, other comments before you break up? Uh, I think the part of a good question for me was really strong um, and not being afraid of silence and just allowing the spirit to move unencumbered by language. Um, I think pacing, there was a great kind of arc to the conversation. Mm, that was a, that was a big thing for me, keeping it focused on the individual. Mm -hmm. I, I think even whenever the natural inclination is to push it away from yourself, just to keep mm -hmm. bringing it back. Mm -hmm. and making it very specific mm -hmm. and definite and action driven at the end mm. all of that stuff really good um i i thought a very a very affirming mm -hmm. presence I, I thought you were a very affirming presence mm. uh, why is it affirmation so powerful guys why why do you why do you need to say things like i really think you can do this you're 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 an amazing coach why does that matter why it's that thing. It's, it's that. I think it's that thing and uh, of um, encouragement in its basic, most basic form is is prophetic. You're speaking life into her. You're 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 putting courage in encouragement. <laughs> you're putting courage exactly. You nailed it. You put courage in when you say you can do this. Oh, you're really gifted at this. And they're like, really? You know, but it doesn't have to be a lot. You just season all your coaching with affirmation, affirmation, affirmation. And that's very natural for me, but you can learn that even if you're not a natural, you know, exhortation person by just having that knowledge. Affirmation is the key to change way more than correction is. Affirmation, write that down. Affirmation is way more powerful towards change than correction. It is. People will grow when you start affirming their sweet spot or their gifts and all doesn't mean correction doesn't help, but it's not as powerful as affirming people. They, most people have a negative internal view of themselves and what they do and affirming changes that narrative. So, go ahead. Can I, just, can I ask Tom about that moment where you pivoted into mentoring? Yeah, yeah, bit? yeah. Is it what? How how does that? I mean, just I always, you were very you knew what you were doing and said this is what yeah, you're yeah. doing. Okay, so, so what I do is I always I never I never try to exceed the component of five uh, five to 
eight at the most percent, maybe less, maybe six or less percent of any session where I'm mentoring and I'm pouring in. But when I sense the Holy Spirit will get them someplace faster and I can drop a couple nuggets on them, I'll do it. And, but I'll stop and say, hey, can I just mentor you for a minute? Can I just share a couple things that have been helpful for me? That's what I do. And I just go boom, boom, boom. And then, then I, but yeah. I don't do it. I tell them I'm going to do it. And then I quickly, every time go, now what's helpful about that for you? And what I find is mentoring's good, but mentoring needs to stay in its place of about 10% at most of anything that you're doing in coaching so that it's only fertilizer. Way more powerful that she articulated her thing yeah. But I find mentoring. Does that help, Gordon? Does that help? Uh, no, it, it, no, it really does. And, and is they like, going back to our earlier on conversation here? Um, is that is the challenge then in terms of the self discipline of the coach that mentoring doesn't become anything prophetic or mini or yeah. ministry Correct. or anything? Correct. Knowing when to stop as much as when to start. Yeah, and I don't. I don't, I don't even go prophetic in my mentoring at, in the yeah. session. I don't yeah. begin to say, I'm beginning to see this picture of you. I don't say that. I don't go there. I go, let me give you a couple nuggets for, because it's, that's a resourcing component. I find mentoring yeah. is a re I never even said that, but it's a resourcing component. It's like, Hey, I got, I got four or five little nuggets in my toolbox. Probably would help you. You yeah. want them? Most people go, give it to me, Tom. <laughs> and I'll just yeah. drop them. Hey, 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 there's a thing, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, 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 a PowerPoint or a, there's a, I, I'm writing my second book and somebody knew it and they said, Hey, I thought about your book and here's a, uh, look at that good husband, Neil, you're going to be a grandpa again, bro. Do it. <laughs> awesome. Um, sorry, I got distracted. Yeah. Yeah. So he's distracted. I'll go good man. No, no, good man. So what I'm saying, uh, Gordon, is listen, you, you, you drop those nuggets for them. You send them the resource. You, 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 you put those in, and they just help the person, and you just get right back out quickly. Does that help, Gordon? Yeah, no, that's really helpful. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thanks. Um, what do you all want to do? I'm going to give you – do you want to do breakouts, or you just want to discuss the rest of the time? I, I kind of went long here. What do you all want to do? Can we carry on talking about this? Yeah, just so no breakouts. Keep going. <laughs> that was a powerful Look, session, and I think there's a lot more to mine out of that. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, just I mean, it's, it's really interesting because you know what, what you're talking earlier about. Um, oh gosh, I can't even remember the term now. About things becoming routine. About you yeah. know uh, charisma. Yep, routinization. Uh, charisma. Yes, uh, that um, these questions about you know. So what's the Holy Spirit doing? And you know, where's God leading you? Uh, uh, and uh, this kind of stuff I, I just realized kind of halfway through that that can become just as routine because you can start yeah. thinking oh yeah, yeah so I know where the Holy Spirit is leading this person yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course uh, of course you you have no idea a lot of the time <laughs> and so just it, it, it's to the it's the importance of being able to mind behind that and, and think, right. what, what is the bigger picture and you know what, what is what is the narrative behind that and, and how is that help you know how would that help the, that per particular person thrive um and so so yeah you know with uh, in, in that session i could really see you doing it tom it's not it, it's not routinizing the whole thing so mm. that uh so that you kind of get these small bits of oh yeah that's so Holy Spirit's doing this so, um, so let me just let me just tie it together so the book that i'm writing the working title is a greater narrative and so what was her narrative originally? I have to perform in this and do this all right for it to go mm -hmm. well. Is that a good narrative or is that a not good narrative? It, it's her narrative, but it's not a, it doesn't invite the spirit. And, it, and we all do that in parts of our lives where we're rowing. <laughs> we're rowing. But the greater narrative is she was created to do this and is amazing and can do it fantastic when the spirit is leading. But instead of me saying that, she had to come to it. So the coaching questions allow her to find her own way forward. But the spirit was, did you just feel it? He was all over that session. But the coaching techniques engaged with the spirit change lives, don't they? But it's not me, but it's coaching, but they're just tools in a toolbox. Right, Steve? I mean, you, I'm saying the same thing you are, but... So her narrative just went higher and her coaching 
she'll do her action step, her coaching will start to go higher. She'll feel that freedom. She's already a very good coach. She just carries some insecurity, <laughs> but I think she's going to be even better. Other, other comment. I mean, we got, I got, I can go, we got five more minutes. What else did you see? There were a couple real pivotal things I did that I think the Lord had me do that made a difference. Do you see any others? It was that moment where there was that long pause. And for me, it was in that silence and in that stillness that, that the Holy Spirit seemed to be just heavier on her. I and I think yep. Yep. having the, um, having, I suppose, the confidence in a way to let that roll yes, for as long as it takes right. was right. a moment. And that's, that's a skill. That's even an ICF skill. The use of silence, the ability to, the ability to know when the work, the, the client, the coachee has gone into the right place, which is they're figuring out their own thing. And you, and in our world, you're allowing the spirit to work. What does the spirit do? It's in the chapter of my book. He affirms, he exalts Jesus. He reveals, he convicts of sin. He does all this stuff. Let him work. Be quiet. Don't talk. But what I find is you can, I watched her. And when she leaned, did you see her lean back and go, that's a very interesting question. Mm. Do that. Man, you just, there it is. You don't have to do anything after that. Then let it work. But then what I noticed was she's such a fast processor and she loves the 50,000 foot. She doesn't like as much me making her write it down. But I, that was a little bit mentoring right there. But it's coaching as well because I know that is a tendency. And as a coach, that's why I did the first session with her because I, I looked at all her her wiring and everything and got to know I, I have a sense of what she's carrying where the gold is and that knowledge as a coach to help me do that session better than if I had not does that make sense like my past session helped me do better with that session so anyway other questions comments no um okay well, what, go around. Let's go around the room. What was helpful about today? Everybody. Elena, you get to start. What was helpful about today? Well, the coaching session was the most helpful <laughs> thing to me. But I think the reason that uh, the things that led up to that was just that emphasis on the Holy, the centrality of the Holy Spirit. And it just oh. made me think I, I, I need to get better at this tuning in thing and doing less in my own strength right um, right amen and that's really good just it's not even more that was even language of performance it's mm -hmm. not even doing better it's letting go more <laughs> if yeah. i could meant that's a mentoring right there but just it's not even doing better it's just letting go more and cooperating more and you can do it you mm -hmm. it was so thanks for being brave on the day that your child your grandchild was being born you were very, you, I, I'm very glad that you got that session. So Nicola, what, what stood out to you today? Um, I think, um, it's just all just so good. I, I, <laughs> it's hard to pick one, but I think thinking about, just thinking about this with friends in terms of, you know, the, the, pr the present presence yeah. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, and, and for me, I feel like the Holy Spirit really, has kind of just done something in my spirit around questioning the bones and that and that is like that. Yeah. and he's going to bring life as as we question the bones just as he did as ezekiel prophesied just a different wow. thing so um develop that that's beautiful yeah yeah wow. yeah fantastic i've never heard that one that but i resonate with it yeah uh, cool. nikki abby what would you what's your what's your big takeaway today wow I've got to tell you, there's profound stuff going on with me at the moment. I'm just absolutely blown away. Um, nice, nice. From the whole, oh God. Oh. No, no. You don't want that taken away from us. Don't take that away from us. <laughs> Let it come back. Oh my goodness, that's the enemy. He's trying to mess with us. Uh, okay, let's. I 
Okay. Okay. She's there. Help us, Lord. I'll tell her to put it in. Shall I tell her to put it in the chat? Because she's frozen. Maybe. If everyone else mutes, that might help. Yeah. Does it really? Okay. Uh, she dropped off. So let, she'll come back. Let's let her wrap up. Uh, Gordon, what's your big take? Well, take uh, well for me, it would be the, con the confidence piece, I think, that I can be confident that the spirit is already at work. Amen. And that he knows he knows better than I do, I think, Amen. What, Amen. what the person needs and that he comes when he's invited. Amen. So all of that's really good. Yeah, it's just really good to that's, be reminded. Yeah. You asked some great questions about mentoring, too. I hope that's a nugget yeah. you can take away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Steve, absolutely. what would you say your big takeaway is? Uh, so, I mean, so I, I had this aha moment just about, you know, the, the, you know so I've really got the, before the idea of, uh, you know, reframing the questions from from you know task to what's behind the task and what's behind that, that the trip thing. remember that triple loop thing i did yeah. with you? i was yeah. doing it i don't know if you saw that but that's what i was doing yeah that's right and so uh, but uh, but to see that in in a sense to to see that actually what i need to do is ref is to be able to in a sense reframe what the holy spirit is doing in that moment yeah. so what's what's you know what's behind that specific thing that the holy spirit's doing in terms of the, uh, the bigger narrative so i just mm. i kind of saw i kind of saw that it that it works both for what the, for what the holy spirit's doing as well as what the person is planning good, good good you guys are all very gifted at this i hope that what i'm doing is is adding to your your skill set and your abilities and I want to hear what Nikki had to say, but I, I know we're past time and um, we have other meetings. So I'm going to pray. Go, um, Nikki. Oh, I've got we here. Go, go Nikki. Uh, <laughs> can I just say one thing really quickly? Oh, you really came back. Too. Okay, please tell us. Oh my gosh, go. This, just this week, I finished off coaching after six months, and who I was coaching said that I've got a new screensaver because God spoke to me about this, and He turned it round for me. And it was a sailing boat. And he said, I've learned how to sail and take some of those skills onto other people. And I, it just blew me away. Are you kidding me? Did you, um, did you use that analogy or did she I, use it? I'd used it throughout a, a, at a point. But um, he said, this is my screensaver now because I don't ever want to go back in the boat. And it, it, was, it was just amazing. I just, yeah, oh. just blowing me away right now. It's oh, just, gosh. Well, let me just do this. I just, this is my favorite thing to do. So just get in a position of receiving and let me just bless you right now. Everybody just receive. Yeah, yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that we would have the capacity to cooperate with the winds of your spirit in people's lives, in our lives, with this new baby being born today. In everything that you're doing, the spirit giveth life, John 6, 63. Your words are life. You are life. And I just ask that you would pour in an increased capacity to just sense you, uh, believe in you, have confidence in you, and cooperate with you so, so that the bride is made ready for the return of the king, so that Jesus is revealed in the earth, so that the light of the knowledge of the glory of God covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. Their narrative is, 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 is epic, and, and you want to do it. So I just pray for these coaches to begin a new dimension. I, pr I bless you today with a new dimension of spirit cooperation in your ministry, in your work of coaching, that you go to new levels, and you, you see your cities and your families and your people around you changing because God is doing it, and you're, you're a part of it. And I bless you guys with every blessing that is in the heart of jesus for you in his name amen amen man love you guys you're Thank amazing you, talk Thank to you, you soon have bye -bye. a great day Leonard. have a great bye. day bye. 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 Bye.